current setting so you can limit current just to kind of protect something. So you set it to 1.5 approximately. This one does not have a fine setting. So I think what I'm going to do is use the other supply, which has a coarse setting. Fine setting on this supply, we can get it really close to 1.5 volts. There it is, right on the money. Don't need this one. Get ourselves back in position. Sorry for all the camera movement, but I don't have multiple cameras at this point. So here's what we're going to do. Let's find us some jumpers and connectors and get it hooked up and we'll come back in just a second. Okay, so here we are. We have plugged in a 9 volt battery. We have set our power supply to 1.5 volts and we have connected up 1.5 volts which is where the D cell would normally go. Now in these old meters the way the banana plugs worked were backwards. The actual male part prong, as you can see in here, of the modern style, actually was on the meter. Whereas on modern meters, it's actually a female section on the meter. So I don't actually have any probes that are going to work, but we, we'll use these because the metal will touch the ends of the prongs here and we can just kind of hold them down for now. So here we have common, so we'll put black there, and we have plus. All right, so the first thing to do is let's just see, you know, the batteries are used to measure resistance, right, to power the meter. So I've set it on R times 100, and I should be able to just short these. Oh, look, excellent. So now zero, you should be able to zero it. Look, I'm able to go to zero. Exactly zero it. So there should be zero ohms. It looks like, in fact, this pot is working very smooth, right? It doesn't appear to even be dirty or be, the needle would be jumping around. Oops. I think that's because I'm not making good contact here. So we're able to zero it. All right, that's excellent. So at least as a Ohm meter, it appears to work. It looks like it has a 10k range, r times 1, r times 100, r times 10k. So if we do the same thing here, on these old meters, you have to re zero them on, on the different scales every time you use it. So zero it now, I can do my measurement. Well, let's see how accurate this is. Let me find a resistor. I think I have a couple here. See what this is. In fact, I can't even read the color bars to even tell what it is, but I will use my digital meter as a comparison. And let's turn this meter on. Let's see what we have. We have 400, it looks like it's a 470, actually reading 468. Okay, that's good. Let's try that one. That's on the low end. Let's see if I have a larger value. This is an auto ranging meter. Oh my goodness, this is a meg. Uh, almost a meg. So that might be interesting because I think it'll go to a meg. Let's find something in the middle. Uh, a kilo, a uh, kilo ohm. Thousand ohms. Let's do. Let's do all of those. So let's give it a shot. I'm gonna have to make sure those are. So let's put it on the R times ten thousand. First thing we do is zero it. Measure it.
don't remember what this one was. Uh, that note that looks to be off a little bit. Okay, so let's see what's happening here. Let's zero this here. Looks like I can't zero now. Yeah, that is. I think I just have connection problems here. So I may have to resolve, get the right connection or the right um, pro uh, leads before we can do this. Seems to be a connection problem or something going on. Could be it needs cleaning the actual rotary connector. Let's see. Well, that's close. That's close to a K. But see, it's all over the place because this is hokey. It's not making good contact. What we need to do at this point, it looks like things are working. Now, at least as an ohm meter. Now, what we can do, and we'll be a little bit careful, is test it as a voltmeter. So I think to do that, this is ACDC 1000 in common. And we put this on 250 volts. This is where it's going to get a little hokey. I hope we don't see smoke. <laughs> but this thing should, if I slip it in this outlet, see what happens. Woo! We did hear a pop. All right. Well, I think the fuse just popped. So we have a problem as a voltmeter. Uh, oh, maybe it was my fault. I didn't have it on AC. Oh, well. Live and learn. Just don't know how to use these old meters. But that's okay. What I think I'll do at this point is I will, I think we're going to be in pretty good shape on this. Uh, I'm going to get us some new fuses. I'm going to figure out how to connect the 1.5 volts up. Come up with some type of metal spring brackets here so we can slip the, you know, reconnect this up where we can use a, a D cell. Um, clean up these connectors really good. I'll use some cleaner for these connectors, but other and glue this uh, standoff post back in, get it back attached. And I think we're going to have a, you know, at least as an ohm meter, we're going to have something pretty good here. But I think we can get this going on AC and everything else. So, all right, that's so we're not in too bad shape with this Simpson meter. Um, let me disconnect this for a short sum out here. But it's a really cool meter. The other thing that I will do is we will come in here and we'll really polish and clean this up. And if nothing else, it'll be a working or maybe ultimately a semi-working uh, older style analog meter. Certainly contrast against these modern, very complex meters. These meters do capacitance, ohms, Measure HFE and gain of, of transistors. Um, really, it's amazing what they can jam into one of these new digital meters. And this, you know, a few years ago, this is this is all you had. Really cool. Okay, see you next time.